What's up everyone? This is John O'Bacon. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, thank you for joining me for another YouTube video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with what's going on. So today I want to get into a whole bunch of recommendations for how to create a healthier and more productive remote office. Okay, so many of you uh, are working from home. Um, uh, COVID-19, as I record this, is, is of course, you know, happening all over the world. People are just starting to kind of get back into going back to normal life a little bit as I record this, but still very much early stages. But there's no doubt that the remote working uh, beast is going to continue to grow. Like more and more people working from home, more and more businesses are understanding how to uh, kind of work from home and, and, and have teams that work from home. But the big question is, how do you do this in a really healthy and productive way? Because with if you have the wrong kinds of habits in place, then it can be a bit of a problem. So I've been working from home for pretty much my entire career, and I work with a whole range of different businesses and organizations to help them set up internal communities and remote teams, and so they can so they can really kind of be as productive and as efficient, but also as healthy as possible when doing this with their with their team members. Okay. So today I'm going to get into nine. Uh, really practical tips that you can kind of look into, okay? All right, so let's get right into it. So um, there are many, many benefits to setting up a more, a more ergonomic kind of healthier workspace. You know, it can improve your spinal health, boost your productivity, you know, inc you know, help to maintain proper alignment and movement, overall health benefits, often fewer headaches, increasing energy levels, all of those different pieces. But as I go into this, okay, there's no doubt that everything I'm going to cover in this session, I think, is going to edge you in the right direction to just a healthier, more ergonomic, more productive uh, remote working experience. But please, please bear in mind that there is no Dr. Bacon, okay? I am not a doctor. If you've got questions about your health, about what you should be doing, then please talk to your doctor first. Don't listen to people on the internet, okay? Uh, think of these nine tips as things to think about, but then, especially if you've got any pre-existing health issues or health conditions, then you should definitely talk to your doctor first, okay? All right, so let's get into it. So I'm gonna cover kind of nine primary tips in this session. Uh, the first one is gonna be around posture, around having the, the correct posture when you're working. Uh, the second is going to be what kind of gear you have and how you position it and set it up in your office. The third is going to be an ergonomic shopping list. I'm going to recommend some things that you should go out and buy that I think are going to help you set up, a, again, a healthier, kind of more productive uh, work environment. Fourthly, I'm going to talk about standing desks. I'm a huge fan of my standing desk. I'm stood up right now uh, and why that's the case. Uh, then I'm going to talk about carpal tunnel and cubital tunnel syndrome. These are some issues that can form when you have the wrong kind of position or you're overstressing certain parts of your body. Sixth, I'm going to talk through some micro pauses. So um, this is a really kind of simple but effective technique for increasing blood circulation and just getting good stretches in on a day to day basis. The seven, I'm going to talk about stretches and something called back knobbers, which, yes, it sounds weird. It's a bizarrely named product, but I promise you it's it's pretty cool. And, and I think you'll you'll enjoy checking into that. Eighth, I'm going to talk about building a routine and the importance of building a routine. And then finally, the rather awkwardly, you know, numbered number nine. I should really have done 10, but I just didn't have the energy. <laughs> is I'm going to talk about devices and the role that smart devices play in our world, okay? So let's get right into it. But before we get right into it, I'm English, and English people, they need tea, okay? All right, there we go. Now you've heard my awkward gulping sound. Let's get right into it. Tip number one. So posture is really important, okay? One of the things that I've discovered, uh, and that's kind of precipitating a lot of what you're learning about today, is that uh, I turned 40 uh, last year, right? And... Um, I, when I turned 40, I thought, wow, you know, it's I don't feel any different to what I did when I was 30 or 20 or whatever else. Uh, and largely I don't. But what I did notice is that things started creaking a little bit more. This is part of getting older. So, um, you know, I then started having a couple of shoulder issues and I sprained my lower back. And I realized, you know, maybe I should go and talk to a physical therapist and just learn a little bit more about how I use my body. And the first thing that the PT said to me was your posture sucks. And the reason why it sucks is because you've spent so long working in front of a computer and hanging out in front of a computer that your body just got used to this kind of like hunched kind of setting. So what you really need to do is focus on improving your posture. So the way we should be working is that, for example, if I'm if I'm working right now, let me let me go full screen. OK, so if I'm working in front of my computer, what I should be doing is I should be having my shoulders back, but down. OK, and instead of using my neck muscles to pull my shoulders back, what I do is I kind of use this kind of region here 
to kind of pull it back, almost like my lower shoulder blades to kind of pull it back into kind of a comfortable, relaxed uh, posture. The other thing is that my head shouldn't be forward like this. My head should be back, okay, kind of resting back. My back is straight, okay? Now, I'm standing right now, but it's the same thing when you're sitting. Um, we'll get onto the ergonomics of other areas first, but that's the kind of posture we should be in. But I, like many people, was hunched forward, okay? So it's like, how do I fix this? Well, the first thing you need to do is just kind of practice and try to build that habit. But the other thing is I discovered this little device called an upright go. Now, I promise you, this is no commission thing. There's no affiliate sales in this video uh, for, for this device. Okay, I, I bought it and I love it and that's why I'm recommending it. That what we do is you kind of keep keep your shoulders back. And this little device, I've actually got it here. I took it off so I can show it to you. Um, let me get this hair off it, that's gross. <laughs> it looks a little bit like this, okay? It's got a little button on it and you put a sticky thing on the back and you stick it on your back down here, right? Kind of like, like there. And then basically what you do um, is you turn it on, you sync it with your phone, and then when you start hunching over like this, uh, it buzzes. So that makes you go back. And what it does is over time, it you, you just kind of retrain your brain. And my posture is way better now than it used to be because of using the upright go, okay? So, and it's got tools in the app for like a training regime and other features built into it. But the main thing is that it buzzes and then you you, you sit right back up again. So definitely re I'd recommend checking it out. I think they're about $70 or $80. I can't remember exactly how much they cost, but they're really good. And you, you can buy these like proper strips that go on the back. But apparently women use something called boob tape. I don't really know what it is. I presume it's got something to do with boobs. Um, but you can use boob tape instead of buying the more expensive strips, okay? All right, so the second tip um, that we're going to get into is around monitor and keyboard heights, okay? And this is really important because um, you want to make sure that your office is basically set up in a really ergonomic position, right? So, for example, my monitor, as I look at it that's in front of me, it's obviously out of shot, this is um, kind of just a little bit below eye level, okay? Um, it's almost at the same eye level. So when I what I don't want to be doing is doing this or kind of doing this. And a lot of people who work will just work on their laptops and they'll put their laptop on the desk and they'll be looking down like this when they're doing it and that's going to stretch out that's going to st uh, stress your neck muscles and your shoulders and all kinds of things okay the other thing as well is in terms of your keyboard height and the camera's kind of not very well set up for this let me go back here I hope you can hear me right is you kind of want it to be like this where your your arms are at kind of a bit of a right angle here um so your arms are like this um so I, again i'm on a standing desk and i'm going to get to that a little bit later on but you want to make sure that your keyboard and your mouse is at the same kind of level as well, okay? So this is really important because one of the things that causes some health problems with people who work from home or people who work in an office is they maintain exactly the same position all day and they don't move around enough. So if you're in the wrong position, if your monitor's down here and you're spending hours at it or your keyboard is way down here and you're spending hours at it, then it's going to cause these kinds of problems, okay? So that's generally what you want to focus on. Uh, you can use things like adjustable keyboard trays that can can help with this. Um, the other thing I want to touch on is that one of the, the positions that we often get stressed into is when we're mousing is that I'm right-handed, so I use my mouse. I've got an external mouse. So I'm always using this right arm a whole bunch, right? And uh, And this right arm eventually is going to get stressed because of that. So my left hand isn't mousing, and therefore this doesn't get stressed as much. So one of the things you might want to think about doing is switching mouse hands. Now, this might sound weird and impossible, but it really does work. So what I did is I bought a... Sorry, I know I keep turning the camera on and off. I bought one of these. This is a little Apple uh, trackpad for my left hand, and I've got my mouse over here. And I switch between both. You don't have to be, you know, you always hear about these like ambidextrous kind of tennis players and stuff like that. You don't have to be one of those people. The key thing is that you can train yourself to use your other hand. At the beginning, it feels really weird and awkward and uncomfortable. But within a couple of weeks, you'll get used to it. And it takes the stress off that, that other arm quite significantly, okay? So definitely check that out as well. All right, so let's get into tip number three. And this is that a small set of kind of purchases can can make a, a really big difference when it comes to your comfort, okay? So uh, one of the things I definitely recommend, and again, I'm going to keep flicking between the views here, is something like this. This is a mouse mat with a gel pad. This thing is all is quite, quite nice, actually, to squeeze this thing. It's like one of those stress toys. Um, and what I do is I put my mouse on there, 
So my wrist is kind of gently resting kind of against that, okay? And it's uh, and it really does make a big difference, actually. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that you have a laptop stand. So I've got my laptop to the left of me. Again, it's out of view, um, but it's up a bit, right? It's on this stand. It's not particularly expensive. And frankly, you can stick this on a couple of books if you want to. It do you don't have to spend a lot of money on this stuff. And that will get the, the laptop screen to the right level. So now when I look that way, I can see my laptop without having to go like that kind of thing. Ow. <laughs> see, I'm pulling things. <laughs> I'm into my 40s, right? Pulling things already. Um, the other thing you might want to think about is an adjustable monitor arm. So you can adjust the height of your monitor up and down so you can get it to that ideal height. Again, you can always just, frankly, put a load of books there, right? Um, and Or stacks of paper. You know, you can get kind of creative here. You're also going to want to make sure that you've got decent lighting. Now, right now, the way you're looking at me filming this, this is this is a little different because I've got special lights here for when I make these videos. Uh, but normally I don't have these lights on, but I've got these overhead lights and it provides enough light for the room. OK, so you definitely want to make sure that there's plenty of light. Otherwise, your eyes are just going to get really tired. Um, blue light filter glasses. A lot of people get a lot of use out of them. I included them in the list because people seem to like them. I've never really tried them very much. Uh, but then also, you might want to consider getting something like an inflatable backrest or a back support in an office chair. Like your chair is really important. You know, if you're spending a lot of time sitting, go out and spend the money on a decent chair. Like, for example, gaming chairs are pretty cool. Um, they're expensive, but they can they can really save you a lot of heartache down the line, okay? But do your research and make sure that when you research your office chairs, that at, do a search for the word smell because a lot of these office chairs, when they arrive, they stink of chemicals and they're horrible. I've actually sent chairs back because of it uh, because it smells like you're going to have some kind of horrible disease from the smell of it. So, But just go and get some of these little pieces. They're going to be super helpful in making sure that you set up your office effectively. All right, so let's now get into tip number four, which is a standing desk. Now, I'm a huge fan of standing desks. Honestly, the first time I saw a standing desk was when I was... Uh, at a company I used to work at, I was at an event in London, and I was at the, the team office, and uh, I saw this guy stood at this standing desk, and I thought it looked ridiculous, and I was like, what kind of hipster bullshit is this, okay? Stupid standing desk. And like many things, I was wrong. <laughs> um, I love them, because um, first of all, people talk about sitting is the new smoking, and it sounds like a massive cliche. But it really is true. There's a lot of really bad effects when it comes to, to to sitting for a prolonged period of time. And if you're in office work, if you're working in front of a computer, you're sitting down the vast majority of the time. And then what are you doing in your spare time? Well, you're probably sitting down watching TV or sitting down at the pub or whatever it might be. So you've got to make sure that you're, you're getting mobile as much as you can. Uh, it might seem infeasible to be able to stand for longer periods of time. I now stand up the vast majority of the time, primarily because... I ended up spraining my lower, like tail, my tailbone. Um, so as my tailbone is in the process of recovering, um, it's just easier for me to stand. Okay, it's, it's it's helping the healing. Now I bought a table called a Jarvis. It's a Jarvis standing desk. They're a little bit more pricey, but they have like a motorized function where you can set different levels for them to go up and down, and I love it. Um, um, but you can get really cheap ones. You can get standing desks from IKEA. You can get kind of mid-price ones are things like the very desk, which sit on an existing desk, and then you use like a manual lever to kind of lift it up. But they're really good. I, I'm a big fan of it. Um, I like the motorized ones just because of the convenience. And I just find, for example, you know, I did this just before I recorded this. There's a couch down there, and I went and laid down on the couch and watched a couple of uh, YouTube videos while I was taking a break. Um, and then, so I lowered the desk, and then when I went back to work, I pressed the button, and it went back up again. I'm not some kind of moving some kind of crank or something along those lines so definitely check into a standing desk it, i promise you i think it's really worth the investment okay but when you get one make sure that you also um get a mat that you stand on especially if you've got hardwood floors because um like a lot of people experience this when they're cooking right if you're in the kitchen and you're cooking for a couple of hours your lower back can start feeling some pain unless you stood on the mat. It's the same thing. You need to make sure you have a soft surface that you're stood on, okay? I have carpet in this room, and I still stand on a mat, and it really helps me a lot. All right, so let's get into number five. So this is about carpal tunnel syndrome and something called cubital tunnel syndrome. But this is going to be an example of drinking tea syndrome. Drinking tea syndrome. Can't describe England better than that, my friends. Um, so 
this is the time when you take my caveat of not being a doctor particularly seriously, all right? Um, but I'm talking about this from experience. I've had both carpal tunnel syndrome and cubital tunnel syndrome. So carpal tunnel syndrome is basically when you feel kind of numbness and tingling in your hand. Typically, so for example, you'll often feel it in this in this kind of area down here. Um, uh, when I was started out my career, I used to write for computer magazines. Uh, I was, I guess, a pseudo journalist. So I'd be doing this all day, and then I started feeling this 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 sensitivity here. Now, cubital tunnel syndrome is a little bit different, and this is something I experienced more recently, where basically the ulnar nerve, which goes down your arm, kind of gets inflamed, and often where you feel it is kind of down here, but coming round to the front. If I remember right. I think it was down here. It's kind of over where your elbow is. And then you feel it often in your little finger, okay? And this is when you notice how incredibly hairy my arms are, by the way. Oh, good grief. Look at those. I'm a shaved monkey. Um, so what happens is you get this kind of tingling sensation in here. And that's really, really bloody freaky when you first discover that. And you're like, oh, God, have I got something wrong with me? And that's when I discovered that it was cubital tunnel syndrome. Now, when I talked to my doctor, my PT, about it, basically they said one of the reasons for this is because, and I'm going to stand back again here, is that when I'm working, right, you know, like I mentioned earlier on, you're supposed to work like this. Now, what I did is I would be working more like this. So I'd be stood in front of my desk. So if you look at my arms compared to how it should be like this, um, or maybe a little bit more like that, sorry, there we go, it was more like this. So I was just kind of typing away. I was leaning into it right? And that's not good. So the reason why that cubital tunnel syndrome was happening for me was because I was essentially compressing the arm. I was compressing the elbow and the, um, your funny bone, like, you know, when you whack your funny bone, that's kind of hitting that nerve. Okay. So what I discovered from this is first of all, you keep my shoulders back, but also make sure that your arm is kind of more at this kind of angle like that, as opposed to that. Right. It's got to be kind of like that kind of I don't even know what angle that is, but it's kind of more like this as opposed to like that. OK, and that's going to avoid it. So definitely keep an eye on that because, you know, it's really uncomfortable because you feel like you're typing and every time you're working, you can't you can't go. You can't use your arm as much. And that's really kind of debilitating. I actually took three days off just to let it kind of rest and. I'm not good at taking time off, if I'm being honest with you. So uh, I think I am, but I'm not. Because um, I always want to kind of go and do other stuff, like playing the guitar or, you know, reading books or whatever. Anyway, tip number six, let's get into micro breaks. Now, this is cool. Um, and you may or may not be familiar with this notion. So the basic idea of a micro break is that every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, something along those lines, you essentially um, take a very short break. And usually it lasts 30 seconds or a minute, something along those lines. Um, and the reason why this is important is that, first of all, it gives you just a, just an opportunity to just go, ah, OK, you're in the middle of something, you're working really hard, um, and then just a time, just 30 seconds or a minute. I find a minute works well for me every 15 minutes. Just a time to just let your brain go, ah, for a second. And that can help with your concentration and, and reduce stress. But the other thing is it gives you an opportunity to move. So like I mentioned earlier on, one of the challenges that people face is that, um, uh, and PT say, that physical therapists say this all the time, is that if you're in the same position for long periods of time, like, you know, the entire day, and I don't know about you folks, but I work all day every day. You know, I start at eight, I finish at six. Well, I'll go and hang out with the family um, until Jack goes to bed. And then... Um, and then what I'll do is I'll, you know, go back and do another two or three hours and then we'll go to bed. So I spend a lot of time in front of a computer and it's not that I feel like I have to. I love it. I, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy my work. So consequently, you're in that same position. So if you don't loosen that position up and get some blood flowing, that's when it can cause problems. So I use something called Timeout, which runs on the Mac, but you can get them for all operating systems. It's a little bit of software. You can see what it looks like. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't realize I didn't plug this back in. Um, you, you can see what it looks like on the uh, on the right side here. Um, and uh, basically what it does is it essentially locks your screen. It puts up a, a, an overlay. And what happens is you can't use your computer. 
it forces you out of using it for 30 seconds or a minute or whatever you set it to. And what I do is I do this, okay? So I'll typically, I'll typically stand back and then I'll first of all kind of move my arms around like this and just kind of get some stretching in and just kind of do that, get my shoulders back. Then what I'll do is I'll put my shoulders back and kind of pull my shoulder blades together a little bit, okay? Then what I do is I put my arms out like this and I'll just open them like that. And this adds a little bit of, it's like a, it's a, like a light kind of shoulder stretch, I guess you could say. Um, uh, and then I just kind of walk around a little bit and, you know, just kind of get a little bit of movement. It takes a minute or, it, it, you know, anyone can spend a minute every 15 minutes, okay? And if you have a call or something else that you're doing uh, and you're busy uh, and you can't fit that that break in, let's say you're in a one hour discussion. So there's you're going to have, what, three or four of these in that one hour. Um, you can't necessarily take that time away. Well, you know, if you switch your camera off or you do this as an audio only call, you can always do this while you're doing it. You can leave the reminder on. There's always a means to do it. OK, so just get started doing it. I think it's really important. All righty. So. Um, Let's go to tip number seven. Now, this is where I get into this back knobber thing, okay? So, now, research has shown that that when you have this kind of repetitive motion and poor posture, staying in the same position, it can cause or potentially worsen these mus muscular uh, uh, skeletal disorders, okay? So, you really want to kind of keep that range of movement. But what's important here is that your muscles are able to move, okay? Now, if you've got really tight muscles, then they don't move as much, right? So, that can be a bit of a problem. So, to give you an example... You know, I found when I was having my issue with my right shoulder that my, let me move out the way the camera, uh, the microphone, my pecs over here, which are obviously made of steel from my multiple hours in the gym every day working out, um, these pecs were just incredibly tight. My neck muscles were really tight. The muscles down here were really tight. So this was a real problem, okay? And when I went to the PT, she said, we need to loosen all of that stuff up. So, for example, if I move my head this way, it felt okay. But if I moved it this way, I could feel those stretchy things on the side of your neck, your traps, really kind of like pulling because they were super tight. This is when I discovered this thing called a back knobber. Because right now, as I record this video, we're in the midst of COVID-19. So a lot of like massage places and sports therapists are just not working, right? So it's a bit of a problem. So... This is what it looks like. In This is the bacon back knobber. You never ever want to hear those words together, do you? Jeez. Um, and as you can see, it's got all these like knobbly bits around it. And uh, it's kind of, very, it's an ingeniously des designed little uh, device. I actually think it's kind of cool. So for example, this rather awkwardly <laughs> looking thing over here. If I'm doing my pecs, for example, I can kind of just I can kind of like, I'm just trying to get the right angle. You know, I can kind of like hold it in there and oh, I can feel that kind of loosening things up. So I'm basically pulling this thing in, right? And that's it. Oh, that feels good. So now I can feel like I'm loosening up those pecs, right? And that's helping. And usually what you do is you hold it there for about 30 seconds. Don't do it too hard where you might injure yourself, okay? And bear in mind, there's kind of nerve endings all over here. Uh, so you've got to be careful. But a good example is this thing, right? So this has got kind of like an angle on it. Now what I can do is I can put it over my shoulder like this. Okay, so let me do that. And then if I pull this forward, now I'm getting, I'm able to get into those like shoulder muscles on the back, right? Now this would ordinarily require, you know, your other half or a ma massage therapist or someone like that to get in there. You can't really do this like this. It's It's a pain. So it's really cleverly designed, you know. So, for example, you've got these two here, and that can be something you can use on your back like this. So you can get either side of kind of your spine as it's going up there. Um, it's just a very, very cool little device. It's uh, not very expensive. I got mine off Amazon. They're, they're, they're awesome. So I definitely recommend getting that. And learning how to kind of loosen up those back muscles is really going to help quite a bit, okay? All right, we're nearly in there. We're nearly to the end, folks. I hope you're finding this useful. If you find this useful, be sure to go and like this video because uh, that helps my videos to get a little bit more visibility. And of course, hit that subscribe button. Now, creating a routine. So routines are super helpful for increasing productivity and reliability. Um, so the reason for this, tea bag, 
is that we are kind of creatures of habit, human beings. So when we have a routine and we set specific things in that, into that routine, we know it's going to happen. So I'm going to give you an example. This is my routine that you can see here on the screen. I generally start work at eight uh, right now. Uh, normally when it's post, when we're out of this COVID-19 situation, usually I'll tend to start at nine because in the morning it's kind of the school run and getting getting the kiddo ready for school and all that kind of stuff. But usually I'll start at 8.30 or nine o'clock, but recently it's been eight. And what I'll do is about an hour's worth of email and catch up, right? So this is just dealing with what's come in overnight, which is usually quite a bit of stuff uh, because I'm in California. So a lot of the Europeans and the, uh, you know, I deal with a lot of people in Europe and they've they've been filling my inbox full of things for, for me to care about. Um, and then what I'll do is between nine and 12, I'll get into calls. And I've said to my assistant, Mindy, I'd like to really try and keep all of those calls where possible in the morning. Um, if we need to do calls in the afternoon, we'll make it work. But I want the afternoons to be for work. That's when I can spend time doing client work. I can be built creating content like videos like this. I'm recording it right now, you know, 1.16 in the afternoon. Um, so I need that separation. I used to have calls just scheduled in whenever. And it was a bleeding nightmare uh, because I just never had time to actually do any work. So 9 to 12 is calls. 12 to 12.30 is usually lunch. I'll usually go and heat something up and grab a bite to eat and watch a couple of... You, I'm a complete YouTube junkie, so I'll watch a couple of YouTube videos. Uh, and then 12.30 to 1, I'll usually then go in and deal with any email that's kind of coming in the morning and catch up with that. Um, and then 1 to 5 is usually that work block. And that's where I like to devote that time to client work and content creation and other different bits and, bits and pieces. And then 5 to 6 is usually time when I'll go and, and, and work out. So that's how I like to do it. So definitely think about that routine. At the beginning, you'll probably fall out of the routine. It'll be difficult. Remember, habits take about 60 days to, to seal, okay? So at the beginning of building your routine, it can be hard work, but you want to try and stick at it. And then what's going to happen is gradually it'll stick as you go through that two-month period. Um, but also, there may be other things that you have to do all the time. So for example, I need to take time with my PR team and the marketing side. So we have like a marketing, I have like a one-hour marketing block on a Monday, for example, where I go and think about what we're gonna do for the week uh, and, and the PR side. Um, I also schedule out things like content creation like this. It took time to create these slides and to, you know, to, to rehearse it and to put it out there. I do a Facebook Live, uh, I do Facebook Live videos and kind of reserve that. If you don't put it in your calendar, it often won't happen. My view is if it's not on my calendar, it literally doesn't exist. And then there's gonna be other things like, so for me, I've gotta go and get like my invoicing out to my, you know, bookkeeper and, and there's going to be just administrative things that you need to deal with, like, you know, dealing with your business and, and following up with customers and things like that. So you want to make sure that you're really carving that stuff out as well. So put it into your calendar and stick to it. If it's in your calendar, you have to stick to it. If it's not, it's easy to put something in your calendar and ignore it. We do that all the time, but that's, I think, really valuable and it will really help your productivity quite significantly. And then the final one, tip number nine, is what is the role of smart devices? So frankly, these are a big risk. Like we love our phones. There's no doubt about it. We love our tablets. Um, some of you may be wearing some of these ridiculous smart glasses. You know, these, these are dumb glasses. They are not smart at all. They have no computing capability, just a looking capability. That's what my glasses do. Um, but what you want to do is you want to, do a couple of things here. One is set expectations with your colleagues about when you're gonna be on these devices. So when you work from home, one of the real challenges here is setting expectations. If you see all of your colleagues are replying like in their evenings, then you feel like often you need to go and reply and kind of follow up and you know, otherwise you don't wanna come across as lazy or a bit of a slacker. There's always this fear as a, as a remote worker that you know, that people are gonna think you're sitting around watching Netflix all day and you're not, right? So, but you gotta set those expectations otherwise you know, this thing right here is going to be a, an absolute burden to you. You're never going to be able to switch it out and shut it off, okay? So set those expectations. I think the other thing to do is to identify your bad habits. Like, what are the things that you tend to do? So I discovered, for example, fairly recently, I'm embarrassed how long it took me to discover this, that, um, that uh, if I don't have anything to do, let's say I'm waiting for a cup of tea to boil, right? Um and there's no one in the room for me to talk to, I just naturally grab my phone and start looking at it. I don't necessarily have a reason to look at it. It's just become a motor reaction. It's just a habit. And that's a bad habit to get into because then you find yourself 
constantly on your phone. So I spend my entire day in front of a computer and then I spend my time on my phone outside of that. And you just basically have got screen time constantly. So know your bad habits and then you can use a habit tracker to, to determine whether you're breaking them. So for example, you know, one of my habits that I'm trying to build is to take fish oil every day, you know, every time at lunchtime and I have a little reminder that pops up on my phone. Um, but you might say that you've got, you're spending too much time online on your phone. Therefore, one of your habits is to reduce the amount of time that you spend on it, okay? And the good news is that there's digital health tools that are built into Android and, and Apple phones now that can help you with this. But one thing I definitely recommend is as a simple thing to start with is make sure you don't look at your phone 30 minutes before you go to sleep, okay? Um, this is really important because our brains become really wired before we go to sleep and it can really impact your sleep. And when you impact your sleep, your whole life sucks when you can't sleep. Um, so if you're going to do anything, read a Kindle before you go to bed. I love my Kindle. Um, and it means that I can read and occupy my mind because my wife, Erica, she always falls asleep before I do. Um, so I end up like just laying in bed and reading my Kindle and reading books and, and whatever else. And it's just a nice way to do that. And the benefit of the Kindle is because it's e-ink, you're, you're, you're not looking at a typical kind of like LCD screen or an OLED screen. It means that your your eyes are able to just naturally kind of wind down and it makes it easy to go to sleep. I actually, it's become such a ritual for me that I end up reading three or four pages and then I nod off instantly. I fall asleep with my Kindle on my lap, on my chest. Um, it takes me months to read books for that very reason. So anyway, that's everything. Before I wrap up, um, I put a whole load of content out there. I create you know blog posts and how-tos and I give out eBooks and, and do videos and all kinds of stuff. And I'd encourage you to go to johnabacon.com forward slash join where you can pop in your email address and 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 I send out tons of content um, very similar to this that I think will be really useful to you. You know, I don't spam you. I don't sell your email address to anywhere else, anything like that. You know, assholes do that. So, so definitely go and sign up. Um, I think you'll find it really useful. And I hope you found this useful. If you liked it, please like the video. Uh, please subscribe, pop a few comments in. And I'd love you to share in the comments, like what have you learned? What things have you discovered about remote working or kind of workplace setup and habits that you found to be super helpful? Um, and go and pop that in. So with that in mind, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all soon.